Okay, hello student. Today I want to discuss about the SPM module question. Okay, I uh, hope you do it, then you check the answer. Okay, let's see the first one. There's a force and also the motion. Okay, we see the question one. There's a SPM 2011. Okay, they show about the trolley they're moving down for the inclined plane. Now the ticker timer, they vibrate at the frequency 50 hertz. 1.2, they show the ticker tap. Okay, produced by the motion of the trolley. Okay, from the ticker tap, we know the motion of the trolley. Then later, we need to analyzing. Okay, let's see the first one. They call you to underline the correct answer for the bracket to complete the sentence below. The type of the current used in the ticker timer is, okay, we use this uh, alternating current. So you underline this one. Okay, number two, B1. One tick is represented by the time taken from, okay, one tick means a time taken. Time taken from the one point to the next consecutive point. So from here, we take it from P to Q. If you get another answer, also can Q to R, R to S, S to T also can. Okay, now it's number two. We compare the distance between the PQ and ST. From the diagram, we sure we know ST must be distant more than the PQ. So your answer is ST longer than PQ. Okay, now we state the type of the motion of the trolley. Okay, when you see the arrow here, mean this one arrow is a starting point. So this part they will pull first. Okay, PQ will come out first. ST should be the last one to come out. So from here, we need to see the motion. Okay, when starting the PQ is closer, ST is further. So for this one situation, you are pull faster. So from here, we find it the motion should be acceleration. Okay, so from here, you write it acceleration. Okay, sometimes we say velocity increase. You also can say about acceleration. Okay, then we go to question number two. Question number two also show you the ticker tab. They're with the five ticks obtained from an experiment. So one tick is the time taken from P to Q. So just now we say already consecutive. Consecutive means the next one. So if you start from P, the next one is a Q. So that one we call it time taken. That's a one tick. Okay, now we complete the sentence for B. Okay, the following sentence by ticking the tick, the correct answer in the box provided. Ticker tape can be analyzing to determine, okay, from the ticker tape what we can find it. So from there, we can find about the distance and also the speed. We cannot find the force and momentum. So from here, the answer should be the first one. Okay, C1. What is the type of the motion they show by the ticker tape in diagram 1? Okay, so from here, can you see the distance almost constant? So from here, they ask about motion. Motion, we just can answer by velocity or you just can answer by acceleration. So from here, for my answer, you can get constant velocity. Okay, or you can say zero acceleration. Okay, let's see the answer. Okay, now we say give one reason. Why do you say there's a constant velocity? Okay, so you must explain by your observation because I find it the distance between the point equally. So we say constant velocity. Okay, let's check the reason. The distance between the ticks are equal. Okay, so this one is a reason. We go to explain constant velocity. Okay, now we go to question number three. That's a 2015. A student running 200 meter event. Diagram seven, they show about distant time graph to illustrate his running. Okay, let's see the diagram. Okay, this one is a diagram, distance versus time. Okay, when starting O to A, then after that A to B, total distance they move is a 200 meter. So we need to take correct answer in the box provided. Distance is a, okay, distance is no direction. So distance is a scalar quantities. Okay, based on diagram 7, we need to calculate the speed of the student as section AB. Okay, let's see A to B. Okay, what is the speed? So, we need to do the calculation. You want to count about the speed from this one graph, you need to find gradient. 
Okay, so I show the calculation. You check your answer. So we take it y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So calculation, 200 minus 100 over 24 minus 14. So that's a 10. So I find it the velocity or you can say speed is a 10 ms negative 1. Okay, now we need to compare the speed OA and AB. Okay, we no need to count one by one. You want to count to prove also can, but we see the stiffness. When you see the A to B is more stiff, so that one, the speed should be higher. OA, the, uh, the stiffness is less. So, or you, or you can say about the gradient. Gradient AB sure bigger than o, OA. So that means the gradient bigger means there's a speed higher. So from here, I can do the conclusion is AB, speed of the student at the AB is greater than OA. Okay, so from here, AB bigger than OA. Please, when you answer the question, don't write the symbol. You need to write the full sentence. You just copy the question. The speed of the student at OA is less than AB. That's all. Okay, now we go to C. Based on the following aspect, you need to give the suggestion, okay, on how the running time for 200 meter event can be shorted. Okay, the time you need to short, okay, when they achieve distance 200 meter. So this one question is um question for the a little bit same like the AC lah, but this one short a little bit. Okay, first one they ask student attire. Normally, student attire you want to fast, you must say tight. Okay, the attire must be tight. So you're using tight attire. What's the reason? So do not trap the A. Okay, do not trap the A. That means you can reduce the A resistance. Okay, reduce A resistance. Okay, after that, the student shoe. Okay, the student shoe, normally we're using the spike shoe. For the runner, lah, we're using the spike shoe. What's the reason using the spike shoe? They are more stable. They can grip on the, on the floor. So your reason is more grip. Okay, after that, the equipment they need to use for starting line. Okay, when you start to run. So they're using starting block. They must have the starting block. Let, let your foot to step it. Okay, what's the reason you want to put the starting point? A starting block. Okay, this one you want to increase the forward force. Or you can say momentum. Okay, when starting, you want to create the high momentum. So this one is a function for the starting block. If not, maybe you're not stable, you'll fall down. Okay, now we go number four. Okay, diagram one, they show about the man. They're standing on the stationary boat. Now the man, they want to jump out from the boat onto the jetty. Now the boat, they move away from the jetty as he jump. So the man, they will jump to jetty. The boat will move to backside. So that means two objects is moving in opposite direction. Okay, now we need to state the physics. Principle that involve for the movement of the boats and also the main when they jump to the jetty. So this one principle is conservation of momentum because both moving in opposite direction. Okay, so your answer principle conservation of momentum. Explain why the boat they move away from the jetty when the man the jump. Okay, when the man jump, they create the forward momentum. Okay, follow the principle. At the same time, they also will create the backward momentum, is it? So finally, the boat will be moved. Okay, let's see the answer. Momentum of the boat, they must equal to the momentum of the man, but in opposite direction. So that's why when the man just create momentum forward, at the same time, also create the momentum to the backwards. Okay, but for the boat. Okay, when you ask about momentum is how many, both must be the same. Okay, maybe one is 20, another one is negative 20. So this one we say explosion moment, uh, for the momentum. Okay, now C. The mass of the man is 50 kilograms. He jump at a velocity is a 2. Now the mass of the boat is 20. Calculate the velocity of the boats as the man to jump. Okay, so from here we need to using the explosion equation so that means you must assume when starting there's a zero because both is stationary and also stick together so from here we need to using zero equal m1 v1 plus m2 v2 
Okay, finally, I need to find it's a V2. Okay, let's see the answer. 0. Okay, 50 is a man mass. After that, 2 should be the velocity for the man to jump. Okay, 20 is a mass of the boat. Okay, this one, V2 is a velocity of the boat to move. Finally, I find the answer is a negative 5. Negative stand for the boat move in opposite direction. Okay, now we need to name one application of the physics principle. They also state about this one, exploration of the outer space. So from here, your answer should be the rocket. This one also apply the uh, explosion uh, of the principle conservation of momentum. Okay, now we go to number 5. That's SPM 2012. Uh, That's uh, show about the motion of the bowling ball and the bowling pin before and after collision. So this one is before. So the pin is stationary, the ball is moving. Okay, after hit, then they will um, bowling ball go forward, then the pin also go forward. Okay, so from here we see the momentum of the bowling ball and the bowling pin before and after they show in the table. Okay, before the bowling ball is 2.5 momentum. Okay, the pin is stationary. Okay, after hit, the ball moving 0 0.4. The ball becomes slow down. Or you can say momentum become less. Okay, now the bowling pin, they start to move 2.1 momentum. Okay, first one, they ask you what's the meaning for momentum. Momentum, we don't have any definition about the formula. So we just, from the formula, create the definition. Okay, there's a product of the mass and also velocity. Okay, from the formula, straightforward comma become the word. Okay, now we're going to see the B. Okay, B is on the diagram fine and also the table. Determine the total momentum of the bowling ball and the bowling pit. Total momentum. So before collision. So before collision means this one. Ah. Total momentum is how many? Total momentum just 2.5 because the bowling pin is a zero. So we just answer 2.5 kg ms number one. Okay, after collision, after collision means we see this part. Okay, after collision, we find it both in same direction. So we just plus 2.1 plus 0 0.4. So I find it also 2.5 kg ms negative 1. So that means total momentum before equal total momentum after. So from here, the question call you to compare the answer. Okay, both answers should be equal. Okay, based on your answer in... 5B and 5C, you state the conclusion about total momentum. The total momentum is a conserve. So from here, your conclusion is total momentum before and after is equal. Okay, now we need to name the physics principle. The physics principle is principle, uh, the principle of conservation of momentum. Okay, number three, you need to state one condition. They are needed in order to apply the physics principle state in the 5D2. Okay, you need to see one of the condition. Okay, we need to assume uh, one condition that needed in order to apply. Okay, for this one situation, principle conservation momentum, we need to create one of the assumption. There's a no net force acting for the system. If got any force to acting, we cannot say conservation. So we need to assume there's a no external force acting to this condition. Okay, now we're going to see E. Total kinetic energy of the bowling ball and the bowling pin after the collision decreases. What type of collision is this? This one collision is a because separate. So there's a inelastic collision. Okay, now we're going to see 6. There's SPM 2015. Okay, diagram 2, they show about the forces that are acting on the moving car. Okay, the mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. Okay, now they ask you what means of the balance force. Okay, balance force means in front, behind, up and also down becomes zero. That one we call balance force. You also can say there's a resultant force equal to the zero. That one we call balance force. Okay, let's see the answer. Resultant force equals zero. 
Okay, B, when the engine thrust is 5,000 newton, thrust mean go forward, the car moves constant speed. A constant speed is a keyword. What situation for constant speed? Constant speed means the net force is a zero. So that means if forward is a 5,000, if constant speed, the behind also must be 5,000. Okay, so now from here they say, state the net force acting on the car. Okay, if there's a constant speed, the net force sure is a zero. So your answer is zero newton. Okay, what is a resist resistive force acting to the car? Resistive force means the friction. What's the friction now acting to the car when constant speed? Your answer also same like 5,000 newton. Okay, when you know the friction, the friction is always constant. Okay, now they say when the engine, the increase become 9,000 newton. So that means now the car start to accelerate, is it? So we need to calculate acceleration is how many? So we still apply the formula F equal MA. So now the F is a? 9,000 minus 5,000 because 9,000 go forward, 5,000 still got friction, go backwards, then equal MA. So the mass is how many for the car? Okay, before they follow the question, there's a 1,000. So we need to find acceleration. So the answer is 9,000 minus 5,000 equal MA. So I get it. Your A is 4 MS negative. Ah, oh, sorry, this one is a 2. Okay, not 1, uh, 4 ms negative 2. Okay, then we go to question 7. Okay, 5.1, they show the two cyclists cycling the bicycle and reach to the distance. They're shown in 3 seconds. 5.2, they show only one of the cyclists they are cycling the bicycle. After that, they reach at the same distance, 7 seconds. Okay, you see both bicycles also got two person. Just 5.1 is both also cycle the bicycle. Then 5.2, just one of the cy uh, cyclists that cycle the bicycle. So first one, we go to name the force. Okay, which act between the bicycle, tire and also the road. Okay, so the tire that acting on the road, the sure got one of the force. There is a frictional force. Okay, observe. So when they say observe means we need to compare. Compare the forces applied by the cyclist that cause the bicycle to move. Sure, 5.1 more than 5.2 because two persons start to cycle. So from here, I just answer short one, symbol. You better write full sentence. So from here, I just write 5.1 more than 5.2. Now we compare the time taken travel. Time taken travel, sure, 5.2 longer than 5.1. Okay. 5.2 longer than 5.1. Okay, based on your answer B3. Okay, B2, sorry. B2. Compare the acceleration of the bicycle. Okay, when the time becomes shorter. And also, the force is a higher. So, we find it sure the acceleration is a higher. So, we get it. The answer is 5.1 acceleration is more than 5.2. Okay, now we need to relate the force applied by the cyclist to the acceleration. So from here, you can answer about directly proportional. You also need to answer the full sentence, although I know there's a directly. So how to answer? We just say force applied is directly proportional to the acceleration. Okay, so or you can write like this. As the force applied increase, acceleration also increase. So from here, can you name the law we involve from this one situation? So this one is talking F equal MA, is it? This one is what law? This one is a Newton second law of motion. Okay, what happened to the acceleration of the bicycle in the 5.1? When both cyclists, they bend their body forward. When they bend forward means they are reduced the air resistance. Reduce as an air resistance means you are moved faster. So you find it, the acceleration increase. Give one reason. Your reason is reduce air resistance. Okay, then we go number 8. Number 8 is show about the egg that being dropped onto the wooden block. Now the egg that crack after impact. So the velocity of the egg just before impact, there's a 5. 
So from here, we need to name the force involved during the impact. So the force is an impulsive force. Okay, now you give one reason why the egg will crack after the impact. So first one, we know there's a hard surface. Hard surface, that means time impact becomes short, impulsive force is a higher. Okay, so we check the answer B. High impulsive force. You also can answer about the time impact becomes short. You also can say there's a hard surface. Okay, C, calculation. The mass of the egg is 0 0.05. Okay, after that, you need to calculate the momentum before uh, the impact. So, momentum P equal mv. So, you take the mass, multiply the velocity. So, from here, the answer is 0 0.25 kg ms negative 1. Give one suggestion how you would avoid the egg from cracking when they drop from the same height. So, you can say replace. Replace the wooden block by the soft material. You also can say you put the sponge material. Okay, so from here you can say replace the wooden block with a spongy material or soft material. Okay, 11. Okay, figure 17, that's a free fall height. Okay, then the troposcope photograph, they show about the steel ball in the state. Okay, then the both ball are dropped simultaneously from the same height. Okay, now we need to observe. Okay, observe the photograph and state the similarity between the position of the ball. Okay, what you can see from here. First one I can see is the position. Both ball position free fall is the same. Another one I also can see the distance. The distance between one ball to the next ball. Or you say consecutive ball. Okay. In the both diagram should be equal. Okay. This one is an observation. Okay. Let's see the answer. The position of the both ball are equal. You also can say the distance between the ball in the both photograph increase equally. Both also increase. Okay. Then the distance increase should be the same. Okay, this one is a two observation. Now we need to name one of the physical quantity that caused the ball to fall. Okay, anything to pull the force to go down. Your answer is a gravitational force. There's a pull by the gravitational force. That's why the ball will free fall. Okay, now we continue with the B. Based on the position of the free fall ball, there's a physical quantity, there's a constant. Okay, now we need to name what should be constant. So the constant sure is a gravity. Okay, gravity don't uh, care about the mass. Okay, when it's just free fall, should be equal. So for the earth, we make the round number is a 10. Actually, there's a 9.81. So from here, name the quantity. So the quantity is a gravitational acceleration. Okay, what is the value of this quantity? The value is 9.81 ms negative 2. So this one, num this one, the value should be constant. Okay, number 3, you need to state how the mass of the ball that will affect the value of the physical quantities of gravity. So actually, the mass is not related. So from here, your answer is mass does not affect the acceleration. Now a ball is thrown vertically upwards. When it's thrown vertically upwards, means you are opposite the direction of the gravitational acceleration. Okay, what happened to the motion of the ball as it moves upwards? The motion will become decreases, or you say deceleration, or you can say velocity decreases because you are against the direction of gravity. So the answer velocity decreases. Okay, so I told you already just now why the velocity decreases because they are moving against the direction of gravitational force. Okay, then we go to question 12. Figure 18, they show the feeder and also the water droplets. They're falling for the same height. Now the mass of the feeder and also the water droplets is the same. Okay, and also both drop simultaneously. Okay. 
at the time is a zero second. Okay, now the graph they got show you the motion of the feeder and also the water droplets from the time is zero. So you can refer the graph. When starting, both increases. Okay, until the certain time, okay, they are become constant. Okay, increases until become constant. But finally, we find it the velocity of the droplets is higher than the feeder. Okay, now we need to name one of the force acting the feeder and also the water droplets. So the force to make it to come down, there's a gravitational force. Okay, B, using the 8.1, we compare the surface area of the feeder and water droplets. So from here, we sure we know which one surface area should be bigger. Sure is a feeder, surface area bigger than the water droplets. Okay, using the graph figure 2, you need to compare the changes in the velocity of the feeder and also water droplets. So the first one must say both uh, fall down with uh, increasing velocity. Okay, initial, both have the same acceleration. You also can say velocity increases. Finally, velocity of the both object become constant. Okay, because both become constant, flat already. But you need to mention velocity of the water droplets is more than the feeder. Okay, then we go to D. Using your answer is B and C, you need to state the relationship between the surface area and also final velocity. So from the feeder, we can say, as the surface area increases, your final velocity sure decreases because they need to overcome the air resistance. So from here, your answer, larger surface area, smaller final velocity. So from here, the feeder and water droplets, now they drop in vacuum. Vacuum means don't have any air resistance affected. Now you need to sketch VT graph to show the motion of the object. So both also drop because of the gravitational force. So from here, you can say about the gravitational acceleration, there's a gravity is how many when it just drop in the vacuum. Your answer must be 9.81. So from here, now the graph is a VT graph. So when you plot the VT graph, sure is a increased constant graph because you want to get same acceleration. So from here, your line must be straight, pass through origin, go straight. When you find the gradient, there's a one constant number. Okay, then we go to question 13. Okay, two forces, the magnitude is a 3 newton and 4 newton, act on the object Y. Okay, now the object Y is placed on the smooth horizontal surface. By drawing the scale parallelogram of the forces to determine the resultant force on the object Y. So from here, we need to draw the diagram by the parallel uh, parallel triangle okay uh, sorry parallel rectangular so from here we need to draw okay arrow must be correct 4 newton continue by 3 newton if you start 3 newton this one up should be 4 newton then from the center we draw the longest line this one is called it resultant force okay so after draw we need to do the calculation Okay, how many resultant force? Okay, so from here, if you do the calculation by drawing, it's okay. Then you need to using the scale. Okay, from here, because 4 Newton and 3 Newton cannot follow the scale, you can using your white paper, you draw again, you set by yourself. 1 Newton stands for 1 cm. Then you draw exactly 4 cm. This one exactly 3 cm. Then you make it 90 degrees. Then you draw whole parallelogram. After that, you can find the final answer here should be 5 cm. So 5 cm stands for 5 newton. Okay. So from here, I get it. The answer is a 5 newton. Okay. Then we're going to do the B. If the mass of the object Y is 2 kg, calculate the acceleration. Okay, so from here, we need to do the calculation. There's a, a F equal MA. They want to find A is how many. F, I know there's a 5 Newton already. Then 2 is a mass. So from here, I show here. F equal MA. 
So A is 2.5 and S negative 2. C, we need to state the direction and also the magnitude of the force that has applied to the object. Why? So that the object is in equilibrium. So you want in equilibrium means forward and backwards must be the same Newton. So from here, I get it. The direction also magnitude. There's a fine Newton. Okay, the magnitude is fine Newton. Direction means go another side. Okay, opposite direction. Okay, now we go to 14. 14, they show about the boy, they're pushing the larger box. After some time, the box still remains stationary. Okay, 5.2, they show about the direction of the aircraft. One forward and backwards, constant, veloc uh, constant height and also velocity. So from here, which one is a keyword? Stationary and constant height. Mean these two situations is a balance force. So from here, they call you to compare. Okay? Not compare. Call you to state the similarity for the magnitude and direction of the forces. So we can compare is F1 and F2. Then after that, F3 and F4. So the first one, magnitude. Okay? Both magnitude must be equal. F1 equal F2. F3 equal F4. How about direction? Direction is in opposite direction. Okay, what is the net force in a both situation? The net force sure is a zero because there's a balance force. Okay, then we go to number three. Based on your answer in 5A and 5.2, name the physics concept. The physics concept is a force in equilibrium. Okay, another aircraft, there's a F3 greater than F4. Describe the motion, sure, acceleration. Okay, explain the answer. Why I say acceleration? Because there is a resultant force, okay? And the aircraft is an unbalanced force. So when it got resultant force, mean now the situation, the motion should increase. So from here, the aircraft is now not balanced already. They become unbalanced force. Okay, question 15. A lady, they're riding along the road at a constant velocity. So this one is a keyword. The total of the downward force acting to the bicycle and also the cyclist is a 650. Okay, now the normal reaction to the tire is a 300. Okay, P, we do know how many. And also the thrust is a 200 newton. So can you calculate the normal reaction P acting on the tire? Okay, sure, up, down, balance. So 650 minus 300. So I get it, the P is a 350 newton. Give one reason why you give the answer for this one. Okay, the answer, okay, they ask you give one reason why the total resistance Q, Q, okay, must be 200. Okay, because this one is a constant velocity. So that means drag and also thrust must be equal. So you can say resultant force is a zero. Lah. So the bicycle move constant velocity, resultant force must zero. What will happen to the lady when the forward thrust is increased? So sure, accelerate. Okay, why the lady they thrown forward when the bicycle they run over the stone? This one is because the inertia of the lady. Okay, explain why the lady can get serious injured if fall onto the road with the surface very hard. Impulsive force increase because of the short impact time. Okay, this one is the answer. Okay, 16. 16, they show about the student, the effective movement of the leaf on the reading uh, of the measurement scale. The mass of the student is a 50 kg. Okay, in the study, the student, they stand on the measurement scale in a slate leaf after they show the figure. Okay, he record the readings. Okay, after that, the measurement scale when the leaf is a rest, moving up with the acceleration, moving up with uniform velocity, moving down with uniform velocity, and also moving down with the acceleration. So the reading we show here. So first one, we find it rest 50. Okay, after that, moving up 60. Moving up with uniform velocity become 50. So from here, we find it rest and constant velocity. Actually, the mass is never changes. Just moving up with acceleration, the reading will change. 
Okay, now we continue. Moving down with constant velocity also never change. Moving down with deceleration, then we change again. So that means with acceleration, the shear will change the mass. Okay, now the first one they ask you the mass of the student 50 kilogram. Can you state the weight? Weight in Newton, so we convert become 500 Newton. Okay, B, state the two types of the movement of the leaf when the reading on the measurement scale is equal to the mass of the student. We got just got two citations. First, at rest. Number two is uniform velocity. Okay, then F is a resultant force that act on the student. R is a normal reaction. Okay, or for the measurement scale. Okay, M is a mass of the student. G is a gravitational acceleration. Can you write the general equation to show the relationship between F, R, M, and also G? Okay, so from here, we're using the equation F equal M A. So from here, I get it. The answer is F equal R minus M G. Okay, so from here, we also can write F is a M A. So R is a normal reaction. They pull upwards. The M G is a weight to go down. So when the leaf they move up with a acceleration, move up means the normal reaction is a bigger. So we take R is bigger. Okay. So R suppose they need to minus the mg equal to ma. So from here I move the ma to another side. I find it the R become bigger. So from here R you can say normal reaction. You also can say there's a reading for the measurement scale. So the normal reaction is greater than the normal weight when they move upward with acceleration. What you observe about the reading of the measurement scale when they move down with the acceleration. Move down now the mg is a bigger. So we can say mg equal. Uh, no, we just say mg minus r equal ma. Okay. So, if mg minus r equal ma, so r will decrease because you are go downwards. Now, the r equal mg minus ma, so the reading decreases. So, they ask you what's the reason. The reason, okay, I show the formula. ma is a f. Now, the mg is bigger because you go down, mg minus r. Now, if I want to find the measurement skill reading, mg minus ma. So that means now your reading is less. So R is stand for reading. We also can say re, uh, reaction. Okay, 17, they show about two of the picture. Uh, no, sorry, not picture. There's a mirror. Mirror is hanging. So now they're hanging on the wall with the different anchor. Okay, the length is the same. They're using the same string. Okay, this one T1, this one T2. Okay, both of the mirror is identical. So identical means the mesh should be the same. Two mirror equilibrium. Okay, each of the mirror is 2 kg. So the string can be withstand to the maximum force 15 Newton. Okay, now what is meant by equilibrium state? Equilibrium state means the resultant force equal to the zero. Okay, what is the weight for any one of the mirror? So you just convert become weight. There's a 20 Newton. Okay, now in the space, you need to draw the triangle forces that act to the mirror. So from here, I straightforward to show you how to draw it. Remember, the arrow must be continuous because there is a equilibrium. So I just show here. Okay, this one become T1. Okay, this one another T1, they join the arrow up, then this one straight forward go down, this one is a weight. So you make sure this one is 120 because 60 plus 60. So the rest become 30 plus 30. So this one is another one, there's a T2. Okay, T2 go upwards, another T2 join. Okay, these two become 90 degrees because 45 plus 45, this one is a weight. Okay, go downwards. So you find it the arrow. For the triangle should be one way direction. Okay, now we continue for this question. After draw, we need to do the calculation. How to find T1? So first one, T1, we draw by triangle 
you can find Fy and also Fx. So from here, we do know the Fx. Suppose the Fx, if you draw both direction, Fx, they go to uh, opposite direction. So the Fx we just ignore. We go and see the Fy. Okay, because the Fy both also go upwards. Fy to Fy equal W. So we just write the equation. Fy equal T1 sine 60. Okay, half. Uh, I take half. So this one, I get it the answer. Fy actually is a tan. If I count one of the tension, there's a tan. Okay, so from here T1, I get it the answer is 5.77. Okay, then you need to... 20 newton become 10 cm. Uh. So from here, if I get it this one in cm 5.77, if I convert to newton, I need to times 2, 11.55. Okay, T2 also same formula. Fy equal T2 sine 45. You just change become 45. So from here, I get it 7.07 cm. So you convert, change become newton, 14.14 newton. Based on your answer, which one is the most suitable method? should be hanged to the mirror. So max the better matter should the tens tension become less. Okay, so I choose T1. So that's an 8.1 diagram. Your reason is a less tension. Okay, if the string is 8.1, they cut it. Now the mirror, they fold out 0 0.6. Calculate the final velocity. So this one fold out is a free fall. So we take the U equals 0, A equals 10. Time taken is 0 0.6. They call you to count the velocity. So we apply the first equation. So I get it 6 ms negative 1. Okay, question 18. They show about a boy. Okay, the play, football player with the mass 50 kilogram, they jump up 0 0.4 meter from the ground level. After that, to hit the ball, there's a pass to him. Now you need to state about the type of energy gained by the football player when he is at the position in the diagram 7. So this one position, what energy? Because you lift up. You lift up, so we're using gravitational potential energy. So we need to calculate the energy mgh. So 50 times 10 times 0 0.4, 200 joule. Now the ball that repels after the player hit, move, and also move with the low velocity before dropping to the ground. Can you suggest the modification that can be done to produce a higher velocity to the ball based on the aspect? So the pressure of the ball must be high. We got enough pressure so you produce larger force. Elasticity must be high elasticity. Why got high elasticity? Because you want to produce high elastic potential energy okay so from here you need to choose which one the correct kicking of the diagram so the answer must be move more backwards than hit forward so this one should be correct your reason you want to increase the impulse greater impulse greater energy Okay, now the ball that's uh, handled by the player is caught by the goalkeeper who is wearing the glove. Give the reason why they wear the glove. First one is reduce the pressure. Okay, so reduce the pressure means you want to reduce the impulsive force. So time impact become longer. So from here the answer is smaller impulsive force, longer impact time. Okay, then we go to the another one. There's a two diagram that show about the way how the gardener they move the view barrel on the muddy road. Okay, the view barrel that exert the pressure on the muddy road, resultant force exert by a view on the road surface 500 newton. The surface of the view contact is two times ten power negative three. Okay, what does the word pressure means? Okay, pressure means force over unit area so you can say force per unit of surface area okay calculate the pressure so the pressure p equal f over a 
So I've got it, the answer 2.5 times 10 power of 5 Pascal. Okay, state one medica uh, medication that made the view better to reduce the pressure. How to reduce pressure? We increase the area. So we increase the area of the tire. You also can say maybe you add another tire. When you put another tire, means you increase the area. So pressure, this one is a reason why I want to increase the area because pressure inversely proportional to the area. Okay, so this one is a question. They show about the diagram 2. They show water tank. They supplied by the water um, block of the flat. Now the water flow each unit for the flat due to the water pressure. So now we're going to see another question eh? because the English never type. You just follow the Malay. They want you to measure the uh, A pressure, the water pressure for the water tank. So we do the formula, pressure of the liquid, P equals H rho G. So H is, uh, sorry, the H is a 3 meter. Then the rho is a 1000 for the water. And the G is a 10. So I get it, uh, 3 times 10 by what, 4 Pascal. Based on the diagram, compare water P and Q. Okay, sure the pressure for the Q is uh, higher than the P. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Okay, pressure at the P, uh, sorry, because the water tank from here. So this one come up. Okay, sure the P is higher because a high location. So the pressure at the P higher pressure to the Q because depth of the Q is a greater. Okay, sorry, let's see the answer check first. Okay, from here the answer is uh, pressure of the P. Okay, pressure of the P is less. Pressure of the Q should be higher. So this one reverse. How many to chain? Pressure at the Q is bigger than pressure to the P. Then the reason is a depth of the Q is greater. Okay, depth of the Q is a greater. So the Q should be higher. Okay, now we go to number three. Okay, they show about the how the water is supplied to the house from the outer storage tank. The water pipe in the house that lead two point. Okay, the P and also the Q. Okay, depth of the water P and Q, you need to compare. Okay, sure the depth Q is higher than the depth P. So, point P is less than Q. Horizontal distance, also Q is further. So, Q is more than P. Pressure, sure is a Q bigger than the P. Okay, relate the pressure of the water with the horizontal distance. Okay, pressure higher, distance further. Directly proportional. Pressure and also depth, also directly proportional. To prevent the uh, wastage of the water, stop the cock of the X. Okay, supply water storage tank in turn off. What will happen to the distance of the water spurting up from the point Q? I find it the Q distance sure less. Because now your water supply become less, your depth will be keep decreases. So from here, decreases because the depth of the water decrease. Okay, now we go to the, the following question. Okay, this one is a instrument they use to measure atmospheric pressure. Okay, first one they ask you what's the name for this one instrument. The name we call it mercury barometer. Reason why the mercury use. Okay, first one we know high density, opaque and non-stick. You also can say easy to contract. Okay, state the atmospheric pressure in the unit cm mercury. Okay, from the diagram that shows 76. So we just write 76 cm mercury. Okay, please convert to Pascal. So we're using H rho G. Okay, so I get it 1.034 times 10 power 5 Pascal. Okay, 5, they show hydraulic system. Okay, so F is an exit to the small system. Now the principle involved for the hydraulic system, there's a Pascal principle. Compare the pressure P and Q. 
the answer is both equal. Okay, now the diagram that shows hydrate jet for the car service center. Okay, a force 50 newton that adds to the small piston. When the handle push down, the cross-sectional area of the small piston 0 0.04. 0 0.8 is a bigger piston. So can you calculate the pressure? So from here, we just calculate the pressure from the small piston because we do know what is the force for the bigger piston. So we just do the calculation. P equal F over A. So 50 over 0 0.04. So I get it. The input pressure is a 1250. So we need to calculate the force for the larger piston. So first one, pressure as Z is a equal. So we apply the same pressure. F equal pressure over area. So there's a 1000 Newton produced. Okay, now we're going to see the diagram 7.2. Okay, from here, explain how the handle is used to lift the load to the maximum height. Okay, so normally the handle must be pushed down. Okay, when handle just pushed down, so you find the WAF A. WAF A, they will close. Okay, how about the oil? Okay, the pressure transmit first, then the oil also follow, then the WAF B is open. So the oil will store at the large piston, then they will move, push the large piston go upwards. So this one process need to continuous. Okay, continuous to move up and move down the handle. Finally, the oil will push the last piston, go to the maximum height. So from here, the question, just two marks, so we just answered it. Push the handle down, WAF A close, then the WAF B is open. The pressure transmit to the large piston equally and also allow the oil to move to the large piston, finally to lift up the load to the maximum height. Explain one modification to the large piston, enable the jet to lift the heavy load. So from here, what we can modify to make the load go higher, or you can say, replace the heavier load, I can move, uh, move up more heavier load. So your answer is you increase the output piston. Okay, increase the surface area of the output piston. Then large piston to produce the larger output force to lift the heavier load. Okay, how does the load is lower? Finally, you finish how to make the load to come down to the original place. So you need to open, open the release valve. So all the oil will go back to the reservoir. So the load will be go downwards. Okay, so this one is what I want to present until this question. Then the following, I will continue to the question 2, SPM 2013, question 6. Okay, so this one is, uh, thank you for watching. If you still don't understand the answer, that means you can PM me to ask about that. So, thank you.